of people activity. Um, and what I wanted to know is do you feel that these areas have largely been ignored um, in the black community's attempt to rebuild itself or re, uh, reform itself, I guess? Well, I, I'd say that we're not even aware of these 10 areas. Um, okay. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and I think it's it's hard to understand it fully un unless you either want to pick up and read the book or have a discussion about it. I actually think that there should be a, a, just a, a discussion of breaking down each of those 10 areas. You know, mm -hmm. in particular, like uh, the biggest, I think one of the biggest, um, most vital ones that that's used is entertainment. Um, when we're looking at um, the media outlets that are used is basically character assassination. I mean, we got to look at who owns media, and it's basically consolidated to six corporations. And we're looking at AOL, Time Warner, Disney, um, Bertelsmann, Viacom, News Corp, and Vivendi. You know, and these basically are responsible for the images and their, you know, the agenda is pretty much global white supremacy. I mean, it's the perception that white folk are the majority and genetically superior. So when we're looking right. at the best tool that they use is called Agiprop, and Agiprop is agitation propaganda. And what's, this is basically what we see on TV every day. When we look and when we turn on the TV, I mean, just do this experiment. Out of all the television programs, count how many non-African or non-European people you see on a show. Uh, and if you do see one, it'll be one. And 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 if if it is a one, more than likely his role is a court jester or some kind of buffoon. Um, when we look at print ads, what is beauty? You know, that's why a lot of it, and hopefully we'll have time to get into it, we must make time to get into the effect on African women, is the whole beauty thing about what is beautiful. You know, why are African women so, you know, so caught up into thinking or, or basically uh, confused about the perception of beauty and would rather right. go for the uh, made-up version opposed to their natural beauty? This, this is a concerted effort, and that's what I'm saying. When you're looking at global white supremacy, Things that are not coincidentally happening, they're done by design. Let's look at the Superman complex. I mean, let's look at how, you know, most of us as kids, especially males, when they looked at, with the father not being there in most cases, or if he was there, he wasn't mentally there, um, what was our perception of manhood? You know, we look, went to the superheroes and, and wearing the capes and being super, you know, overpowerful, or, or for lack of a better name. What complexion were they? They were not African. They were white men. Um, it even got into adulthood where you had a couple of years, you had Shaquille O'Neal and Dwight Howard actually fighting over the name Superman. You know, you got mm -hmm. two grown men that are saying, no, I'm the real Superman. No, I'm the real Superman. The real Superman is a white guy. Right. You know what I mean? Neither of you are that. Uh, many people waste their lives seeing white men as something to emulate. Uh, there's a sister by the name of uh, Leonita McLean. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her. In the 1980s, a brother just blessed me with this information. During the um, during the How Harold Washington mayoral uh, inductee or, or movement in 1983, the, the race, uh, there was this woman by the name of Le Leonita McLean. She mm -hmm. was an African American or American African journalist, um, and she wrote about race and politics. Um, she was privileged. And she did everything in her might to be accepted, in a, you know, through this word of simulation. And basically, uh, after learning how hard the campaign was, how racial it came for the Harold Washington mayoral um, uh, campaign of, for Chicago, she wrote an article called How Chicago Taught Me to Hate Whites. And it was put in uh, the Washington Post in 1983. She committed suicide. Mm. It hurt her so bad, realizing that she could never measure up. She would never be seen as equal, that it drove her to suicide. So we're looking at how, you know, this mentality of wanting to be accepted, the illusion of inclusion, you know, this mindset has been perpetuated and it's daily thrown in our faces, and now it's, it's emphasized on our youth through hip-hop. I mean, you look at... Uh, you turn on a children's station like Nickelodeon Jr., and you see everybody's doing dancing to hip hop music. Where are the black people at? It's all white folk. All right. That's what they do. They come and they take and they claim it as theirs. It's no different than what Aristotle and Plato did. We're seeing the right. same exact thing of African history and culture being plagiarized and taken away from us, and then we don't have an identity, and we forget that we forgot. Transition 13. 
So this is the the point of where we have to start realizing that we're being blacked out through whitewash. Mm-hmm. And this is what a brother by the name of Cesar wrote a book called Blacked Out Through Whitewash. We suffer from the long illness of skin bleaching and straight blonde hair. You know, now we're doing color contact lenses and plastic surgery. Black people, you know what I mean? We have this thing called the Sphinx Syndrome. Um, Napoleon, who blew off the nose of Hera Marquette or the Sphinx, in 1799 because we saw how African it was. We have African women today doing the same thing, hacking off their noses, making it thinner because they think that it, what they have is not beautiful enough. They have to be right. looking European. They won't say European. They won't say European, but that is, in essence, what they're doing. So I think that there's been a concerted, large concerted effort, particularly on African women. I don't know if you've heard recently, uh, it happened earlier this, earlier this year, um, a Nigerian woman uh, who died from uh, injecting butt injections. She did it herself or had a friend do it, and she died from trying to have a larger butt like Nicki Minaj. And Nicki, we know Nicki Minaj is that it's not her ass. Uh, right. Lil' Kim, you know. You have young women in their 20s getting plastic surgery. This is what Europeans do. So, you know, it's a constant fight, a constant, uh, you know, grap, grapple to identify ourselves because we don't see ourselves. We don't right. see ourselves. The only place we see ourselves are in slums, uh, as I said before, the lower level. So of those Negroes that do make it out of that lower level, they they aspire to look, and you'll find over time they become less and less looking African. They become less and less associated with African people. Uh, when I say African people, I'm saying black people. I'm talking about black people that are in America. You're African. Right. Okay? So... I mean, there's there's a campaign, I don't know if you've recently seen, uh, in 2011, this year, uh, Nivea, which is a soap or a lotion, uh, they had an ad called Re-Civilize Yourself, and it had an ad of a black man holding a uh, the head, which is, I guess, supposed to be him, and the head, he was uh, holding his hand about to throw the head, and the head had a kinky, nappy hair, and mm-hmm. he was about to throw the, the, the head away, and he had a low cut, and it was the ad said, Re-Civilize Yourself. You know, the Benetton, the Benetton ads, you know, if you've seen, if you remember the, ben, the infamous Benetton ads of, oh, yeah. you know, they had the black baby that had the devil haircut, you know, with the, the horns. Mm-hmm. You the had horn. the African woman breast, breastfeeding the white baby. You know, mm-hmm. these are things, those are the, those are the blatant ones. But again, oh, as word. I said, you can look, you can look and see on TV the other situations. You know, we have the, the basically, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Walima Baruti, he wrote about the the basically uh, the the emasculation of the African man. Uh, we're talking mm-hmm. about the the leading uh, cross dresser today being Tyler Perry. Uh, all actors, most most all actors, black actors have done it. Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, Ving Rhames, Wesley Snipes, except and they, even down to Flip Wilson, except uh, Dave Chappelle, who broke it down. You know what they were trying to do. So this is what we're being bombarded with left, right, and center about what it is to be African, or rather what it is to be in America. And I did believe that, too, until I saw for myself that actually Chappelle did do it. He did it in, uh, he did? I think it's the, the Men in Tights. Um, there's a clip of him. In that movie, he did, act, it's Robin Hood, Men in Tights. That's the name of the movie. And he uh-huh. actually did wear a dress. Um, I was very disappointed to see that. but Wow. Anyway. Yeah, he Thank did. Thank you for correcting me on that. Thank it you was some correct. time ago. Um, mm-hmm. I remember the yeah. movie, and i, I got to go back and look at it. I, I definitely remember Yeah, that movie. he did it. He did. It's, it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. But anyway, go, go ahead. But, yeah, but there's a concerted effort to, to get that to happen because it, they they feel like they can break you. And right. and that's the whole mentality of in the slave anyway was they looked at They equated Africans as slaves, I mean as, uh, as horses. You had to break them down. So that's where the physical beating came down, and then when you beat them to the point of near death, then they would, everything you said to them was golden. So this right. is the same thing metaphorically being done in Hollywood, uh, which, of course, Hollywood project these things for our kids and our people to see on their television. vision. And then they grow up thinking, okay, well, this is what I'm supposed to be. You know, mm-hmm. So this is not, again, by happenstance. Now, these things are being done you know, for a reason to make sure. Uh, and you know, the biggest thing is, is, is about maintaining the separation of gender, making sure that African men and women don't coexist and, and devise a plan. Uh, COINTELPRO uh, had a three-point three point system. I learned this from Coakley. 
and he talked about how there was a three-point program, three being the highest, and any organization that was run by black men or African men received one point. Any organization ran by African men and women received two points. And any mm-hmm. organization that was ran by African women received three points. So he realized that African women are more of a detriment to their grip on global white supremacy than men by them, men being leaders, which is the case now, <laughs> and even with men and women working coexist, you know, co- coexistently working together. So mm-hmm. it, that's why there's that concerted effort. Think about think about 1997, two years after the Million Man March, you have the the, the Million Woman's March. What was the biggest difference about that? Number one, you had some weak keynote speakers. I mean, Jada Pinkett, come on. The second thing is you had vendors. You had vendors. Now, you know African women love to shop. So how many people actually went there and listened to the message, even though the message was weak? And the, at the Million Man March, there were no vendors. All there was was uh, they had uh, food vendors for, you know, they have fried fish and some other stuff. But they had no vendors. In Philadelphia, I went, and they had vendors up and down lacing up in Philly. And it was interesting to see how many women were actually listening to the speakers and how many people was trying to get a bargain. Mm-hmm. So there's a concerted effort to keep women caught up into your image, you know, your beauty or your lack of, so you need this. You need this this chemical to put in your head. You need this weave because even though it has a chemical that causes, uh, it, it attacks your brain because your brain has the, uh, the the area of your body that has the most openings with the, the hair follicles. It attacks your mindset. You know, they understand that black women should be caught up into wanting to look pretty opposed to understanding their inner beauty. And I hate to be a guy to say that because, it's it's not my role to say that. It's it's too many of us men that think that we can speak for women, and that's where we mess up. But at the same time, there's not a lot of women that are stepping up and resurrecting the spirit of Nefertari or resurrecting the spirit of Queen Hatshepsut or these uh, valiant and 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 giant relics of leaders from from the Nile Valley who not only were on the front line but were running things in in Kemet. These are the resurrected uh, uh, sisters and spirits of sisters that are, are, I hope that our women are, you know, embrace. Because from there, I will sit at your feet in a second, and I will keep my mouth shut and follow orders. <laughs> but mm-hmm. until then, you know, that's why I wrote an article called Sisters Can Spark the Revolution. There's something about, and I think this goes back to the brother's que- uh, question he asked about those that just speak and do nothing. You know, I can sit here and talk all day about what little I know. But when it comes down to get something done, a brother ain't going to listen to me because I'm not giving him what he wants, and that's usually physical. When it all comes down, brothers are trying to impress women. And I'm not gay, so I'm not giving you any of that. So, you know, our conversation is going to go but so far. But if women had a prerequisite, if women were like, listen, and brothers are going to get mad at me when I say this, if sisters around the world was like, you know what, no more poom poom, right? Excuse mm-hmm. my language. But no yeah, more yeah. until you read this curriculum. And in this curriculum, you have books like Stolen Legacy. You have books like, uh, you know, Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization. You have these information, uh, books that deal with queens, like queen, queens of Antiquity, where you're talking about the knowledge, and I mean, the historical knowledge of, of Queen Hatshepsut, and you're looking at what she did in the Nile Valley so that men can learn to respect women and see them on the level of equity opposed to behind every man stands a great woman and realize this beside and in some cases in front of if women were like that if women came out with a plan like that those brothers that would sell out we don't need them anyway go ahead do your thing Mm -hmm. but for those brothers that would pick up and follow that curriculum give us a generation we'd be emancipated so i think that really what it comes down to is a matter of what do we feel that is important and you know if i do if i may uh, towards the end, I, I do have uh, some examples i like to talk about, too, as I mentioned earlier, about how the best way to hide something from you is in a book, but also in front of your face. And I have some scenarios where the agiprop is, is effectively working. I might as well just tell you now. Um, in New York City, uh, if you go down to the um, World Trade Center, uh, or actually Wall Street area, um, right across from where the Bull of Taurus is, which is a whole other story, 
um, there's a, a building called the U.S. Customs Building, the Alexander Ham Hamilton U.S. Customs Building. And in front of this building, uh, you'll find four statues of women. One represents Asia, the other one represents uh, America, Europe, and the last one represents Africa. It's very interesting when you look at the symbolism behind these four statues, and it was resoundingly clear where they see Africa and how they treat us. So I'm going to start with Africa. It's an African woman, and the reason why they're women is because women, they say women give birth to nations, although it's men who destroy them. Um, women, uh, the African woman is sitting on a throne. She's asleep. Okay, she's, her head is tilted over. She's asleep. His head is tilted over to the left. There's a lion to her left. The lion is always also asleep, and the lion is representative of the king of the beast. To her mm -hmm. right, on the side, you'll see that there is a pyramid. I'm sorry, there is the bust of Hera Maquette, which is the correct name for the Sphinx. Uh, and you'll also find that there is a thief in a cloak sneaking up behind her. Okay? The other ironic thing is that the African woman is the only woman of the four that is naked. So from her torso up on up, you can see everything, you know, her breasts and everything of that nature. So she's sitting there, and, and the symbolism behind it is that they say that, uh, it, Desmond Tutu put it best. He said when the missionaries came to Africa, they had the Bible and we had the land, and they said, let us pray. And we closed our eyes, and, we op and when we opened them, we had the Bible, and they had the land. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the African woman uh, basically is, is the symbolism or the subliminal message of Africa being sleep or Africa being dead. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the other scenario is you have Europe, and Europe is the bust, is the, the face of Minerva. And Minerva, who is also on Delta Sigma Theta's sorority shield, a white woman on a black sorority shield, which is oxymoronic, uh, Minerva is supposed to be the, 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 the goddess of wisdom. She's actually the plagiarized version of the African deity, Niet or Nut, that is, from, is the original African god of wisdom. So we find we do, you know, we hear about Greek mythology, it's a myth. It's not really true. All they did was they just changed the names and changed the color. Uh, but however, these things did exist. So anyway, we find that uh, this European woman is sitting, and on her left, she ha on her left hand is holding down the Book of Life. The Book of mm -hmm. Life is what's said to come from Africa. It predates Genesis, the Shabaka Stone. This is the essence of life, how we got here, so on and so forth. Europe is now in control of this. The the thief is right next to her with his, with his cloak a little bit more removed, but you can see a little bit more of his face, but he's sitting there reading a copy himself. So they've stolen it from Africa. Now they're in Europe, and they're, they're reading about our origin. Okay, mm -hmm. now we have Europe. I mean, now we have America. I'm not, Asia is really not important, but we have America now, and America is uh, the woman that sits on, she's, first of all, she's sitting on top of Mayan glyphs, hieroglyphs, and she's look and she's uh, her her the the foot basically is a sign of triumph. She's um, conquering. I think the god's name is Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl, mm -hmm. and that's actually I think the uh, the Native American name for Jesus. Okay, so it's saying that America has conquered religion. They are mm -hmm. propelling or projecting religion. At the same time, she has the Book of Life in her lap. And she is looking forward as if to say, now, we are in possession of this knowledge that we've stolen from Africa, and we are the leaders of it. These are some symbolisms that are all around the world. Like I said, Browder, he does a field trip about D.C. They're in every major city. You're going to see some kind of relic. That, and that's the thing about global white supremacists. They gloat. Like, we talk about secret societies, but they gloat in their, in their quote-unquote, uh, temporary victory. Uh, uh, that they have in position of power right now, so they're not going to hide everything from you. They put, they they can't hold it within. They have to gloat about it. So they put it in symbolism. So if you look at symbolism, you'll see a lot of things out there that are telling a lot more truth about how they really feel about African people than not. And it's just really interesting that you know we really need to start getting into, you know, it's not for everyone. I'm just self isn't for everyone. But as far as learning your role and 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 how you. Uh, how you're perceived in this world is very important for you to understand that these things aren't being done coincidentally. It's not a reason that African people are, are the lower end of everything because we were 
born in, born into sin as they want us to believe in the slave version of the Bible. You know what I mean? So I, I can I can go on and on and on. But um, it, you oh, wanna... I understand what you're saying. I understand. What you're saying. <laughs> and see, a lot of that I think goes back to uh, what you were saying about uh, women not being able to um, identify themselves and uh, their their beauty, their greatness, and being validated. We have a desire, need uh, for that. And you said that um, you touched on the idea that we've talked about many times uh, on this particular program concerning um, the woman being in a position right now to uh, make very positive changes with regard to uh, our men and the love relationship and and all of those things. So I don't want to I don't want you to feel that that perhaps you're sharing something that um, is not well received in this particular forum because it absolutely is. 